Major Suman Gawani, I don't know where to start with, with congratulating you, whether on May 29th, International Peacekeepers Day, you winning this most prestigious award being selected with the Brazilian Naval Commander, uh, and also being the first Indian peacekeeper to win this. Congratulations again. And Thank you so just, much. just wanted to ask you, when you were first informed about this, who was the first person you told and what was your what was their reaction? Uh, the first person I told was my father. Uh, yeah, because he is of course so 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 proud about it. And so when I heard about it on Sunday, I got to know about it on Sunday. So the first person I called was my father. I told him, uh, you know, I was telling you about this award that we get in the UN. So this time it's me. It's me who will be getting it. Yeah. So he was really really very happy. And for me, I was very excited actually because uh, I uh, I never thought that I'll be getting it. Firstly, so I was really very very excited and happy and surprised. So mixed emotions. Uh, and of course, uh, then later I thought that of course all this comes with a big responsibility on my shoulders. We saw that responsibility in action when we covered uh, you at force headquarters in Juba in South Sudan and, and both our battalions, INBAT 1 and INBAT 2 in January 2019. Yes. But tell us a little bit about your role that we witnessed firsthand, of course, uh, so that people can understand what you've really been selected for. Okay. So, um, I was a military observer. And the, the military observer is, for the people to know, a military observer is an unarmed military personnel. So they don't carry weapons when they go out to the field. This is basically for the locals to feel more comfortable when they talk with us. Because when we are not carrying weapons, we are more, I mean, they perceive us more friendly towards them. And the basic task is uh, patrolling, investigating, reporting, and also uh, one added task was with us in South Sudan, that was liaison, liaison with the government forces. Uh, so uh, for me getting this award, basically I I was uh, involved in conduct of seminars, uh, taking classes, lectures uh, for the uh, government forces in South Sudan also. And on behalf of the force, we used to conduct their lectures as to what the force headquarters or UNMIS as a force is doing to combat the uh, conflict-related sexual violence issue in South Sudan. We reported on that and we've seen how bad it's been in South Sudan and one of the reasons that peacekeepers are there is to prevent that. And when we spoke to you even in Juba, you were talking about uh, how not only was it because you were unarmed, but it was also because you were a woman that you were able to break barriers. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, being a woman, I would say that being a woman uh, talking to people is very easy because uh, not only a woman is comfortable talking to me, also a man is comfortable talking to me. Also a child is comfortable talking to me or any woman for that matter. So I think it, it becomes a little easier to win the trust of the people uh, because I think uh, all over the cultures, entire world, women, is, women are perceived to be a motherly figure how doesn't matter how old or how young she is so they are they are perceived to be in a motherly figure so that's how uh, and uh, especially if we talk about the uh, the women there or the locals there so they are more comfortable talking to us uh, because uh, i think they don't they don't see us doing any harm to them or maybe because of in uh, most of the cultures women have never done any harm to anybody i think so so that that comes from there and as you had pointed out, uh, even in South Sudan, uh, they, they are hesitant or not being able to trust people with guns, even if they are men who are there to protect them. They are wearing the blue beret of the UN, they are peacekeepers, but your role was exemplified, one, because you were unarmed and you were able to break these barriers, as you're saying. Yes, of course. Uh, guns, I would say that uh, people in the far villages they don't understand the difference between a uniform uh, of a, uh, you know whether he or she is a peacekeeper or uh, a party to the conflict whichever is uh, going on in the country so i think uh, it is the gun with which they recognize them 
okay these are the people who create uh, conflict and these are the people who do not so even if we are peacekeepers and we are carrying guns there is a little bit of hesitation but when a military observer goes on ground that person is wearing uniform but is not carrying a gun or any arm for that matter so it becomes easier for people to you know trust them that okay this person is uniformed and this person is different because he is uniform but not carrying a gun so this person does not mean any harm to us so that 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 is the reason major suman gawani when you were talking about uh, your role there uh, apart from being a teacher's teacher you were in fact you know passing on the the baton or passing on the flag to or training yeah. other un personnel as well as south sudan Uh, government and military personnel as well including women soldiers right yeah yes yes uh, i was i was involved in conducting uh, you know seminars and on behalf of the force headquarters uh, i used to go and attend those uh, seminars and workshops so uh, we we conducted many workshops for uh, women soldiers of the uh, south sudanese armed forces also in which uh, the people from other departments of the unmis were also uh, present like from law people used to be uh, office of law of legal affairs they used to be present and then women protection advisers used to be present so all of us used to be integrated and we used to conduct seminars to tell them what are their rights and how can they access law and what are the laws uh, which can protect them in such scenarios so uh, basically uh, basically we used to enhance the reach of unwis when we used to do that and uh, enhancing that reach while you were in the interiors of south sudan in small villages uh, what are your memories in terms of what do you bring back that you you say apart from the award which is recognizing that i changed this person's life this child's life this mother's life what are some of the memories that you can share with us uh there there are a lot of memories you know associated to patrols and going to villages uh i made a lot of friends firstly there uh, uh you know whenever i used to go i i used to try and speak to them not only to gain information but also to gain their trust and their confidence you know so i i used to speak and converse with them about their family about, about their daily life and not straight away jump on you know what can i ask them to to get my information so um i remember we used to go to one of the checkpoints uh, day almost uh, on a regular basis because one of our jobs was also liaising with the government forces you know so one of the checkpoints with soldiers we used to go regularly so we had made good friends with those soldiers me and my teammates yeah. so um and once uh, we were there so the soldier says okay wait i want you to meet my wife because what happens near the checkpoints they also have their huts in which they live with their family so it's it's a sort of a camp so front side are the checkpoints and behind that they live with their families in the in the uh, camps and huts so i said okay so he went, he goes back and he brings his wife and he tells his wife see she's the uh, woman i was talking to you about and i'm like what why is it is so special about it he says when i first met you i went home and i told my wife that there is a woman in uniform who comes and you know who talks to us like this so i want our daughters also to study and do something like this yeah uh, but uh, he then used to ask me like what happens in your country how do you guys study how do you guys go into the military because there is nothing structured there so uh, one of that incidents basically and his daughter was a very small girl i think she must be 2 years yeah she must she was in the lap or lap of her mother she must be a 2 year old girl so i really can go that one of the fathers is thinking so much for his daughter that like, okay i want my girl to study and do something tomorrow for this country so that was one of the best memories and let me now ask you about your father in this case and how you got inspired to one uh, you know become a uniform personnel in the indian army and then uh, become a blue beret or a peace speaker peace uh, keeper in the united nations tell us a little bit of your journey which comes from a, a small village in uttarakhand pokhar right yeah yes yes i belong to um, pokhar pokhar uh, village in uttarakhand that is in tehri gadwal 
and uh, about my journey of wearing a uniform i knew that i have to wear uniform mm. because my father also used to wear uniform uh, but i uh, i was so small that i would never knew which uniform i would be wearing because my father used to wear a fire brigade uniform and yeah so i thought okay which uniform to wear so uh, and also i'm from uttarakhand so there are a lot of people who are in army there so i used to get inspired by those also and of course when we see uniform we keep, we see pride you know we feel proud of those people yes. so uh, uh, seeing my father i i asked him one day can girls also go in the army can girls also wear uniform he's like why not you just try you can do anything so that's where i got my wings from you know he he's the one force behind every motivation he he never discourages he always motivates so he's okay why not you just try so yeah that's how i tried and uh, appeared for my combined defense services exam of the 12th and uh, i could clear in i think four attempts yeah that was my fourth attempt when i got to in the army and after one year of training i uh, completed in officers training academy i got commissioned into the corps of signals and uh, if you talk about my journey towards the uh, you know united nations uh, i would say that when I, when i got commissioned i never thought that i would do go to that place to serve because wearing a blue beret and going to un mission is considered very prestigious in our army you know it's, it's it, because it it comes with a very stringent selection procedure and indian army tries and sends best of its people for the missions so i never thought that i would be going but yeah whatever came my way whatever assignments i used to get i did them with full honesty and hard work and in 2018 i remember march 2018 i got to know that uh, i would be going to entebbe the regional service center for united nations for a course for a one month course so in may 2018 i went to un united nations signals academy in entebbe and after coming back from there uh, within a month i was selected for south sudan so that's how i went to south sudan and we were so fortunate to meet you there now of course uh, in the indian military also there's a great uh, movement decisions are being taken uh, it's in the courts as well about women in the military but i want to ask you about the united nations because they have set targets for different uniform personnel in un peacekeeping apart from un personnel even civilians so say for example if you are a uniform personnel 2019 i think it was around 4.7% they wanted in 2028 to go up to 15% and people like you who are mos or who were serving even in offices in peacekeeping missions i think it they want to it to go up to 25% in uh, 2028 so there is a big movement and a and a recognition that there is a necessity to get more and more women of course in every field but I, since we are talking about the un here uh, your thoughts on that uh i would uh, i would say that yeah it's it's very important that more and more women participate in the peacekeeping roles for the same reason that i have already quoted that people feel more comfortable when they talk to the women you know but uh, and as we were we are talking about figures so uh, right now there are 6.7% uh, women in the all the peacekeeping missions you know and uh, i would say i was really very happy that uh, in south sudan if we talk about frontline roles like a military observer and contingent those who are doing patrolling on the ground so uh, we had when i checked out from the mission we were total 37 of female military observers and that is a very good number because uh, you know in almost all the team sites we were present we were we had our present in all the team sites and also if we talk about contingents there were ghanian contingent in which there used to be female platoons there was also mongolian a uh, contingent in which there were female platoons so those i think they really made a mark on ground because when they used to go on foot patrols inside the villages those girls i feel they would have been really role models for the girls out there in the villages or women or i say a lot of men also you know so i think they must have created a lot of impact this is really very important and in terms of impact uh, major suman gamani uh, what have you brought back in terms of the lessons you've learned interacting with the international organizations people from different uh, militaries from south sudan 
to your job and role in the indian army back home now uh if we say about roles uh, both the roles are really entirely different the role that i played in south sudan and the role that i play here in my army they are entirely different but yes of course i have brought back a lot of things from there uh, firstly i have learned respect for diversity uh, we work with a lot of people from different countries who have different work culture uh, different kind of environment in which they work and we our environment is of course different from them so respect for diversity is one thing that i learned and i would always cherish secondly uh, the other thing is patience patience that i have learned uh, that i would say because uh, in in the united nations uh, international peacekeepers day last year that is 29th of may 2019 so i was supposed to command the uh, parade for the international peacekeepers day in south sudan so when i was commanding the parade there were 12 military contingents from different countries you know uh, rwanda ethiopia uh, bangladesh nepal of course my own country's contingent was there so there were there were almost 12 contingents of military there was also contingents of police and there were civilian contingents also so when i was commanding now every country has a different word of command so when i used to give a command everybody used to react in a different way not in the way that indians would react or indian military would react to those word of commands so i used to get really frustrated because you know when you are command commanding a parade or you are giving word of command you have to be really loud and you have yeah. to be very you have to shout at the peak of your lungs yeah. so uh, i used to really get frustrated the initial boss two days that i i'm shouting and nobody is reacting the way i want them to react but i learned that kind of patience from them in and within a uh, 15 20 days of our practice of that parade you know all of them all of us bound together all of us started following the same word of command in the same way so that's how i learned that was really great the patience that was really great so i think these two things are the best that i have learned from there and i would uh, uh, follow them in my life throughout major suman gawani it was an absolute pleasure talking to you again this time back home uh, after we talked to you in south sudan again congratulations to you and hats off to you thank you so much thank you